Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. No quiffs, no laughs, no jokes. Let's get into the actual story because it's an important story and I want to cover it with all seriousness and actually do a video that's actually important. So with that being said ladies and gentlemen, let's actually get into the actual video about how the police probably could have stopped a girl from being murdered. Let's get into it. So, as you can see, policeman just took 84 seconds on the phone call to tell murder, I'm sorry, murdered stalker victim Shanna Grease she was wasting police time reporting the man who killed her because he had told officers they were still in a relationship. I do understand that the police have to deal with a lot of people that are probably phoning up about fake issues. I do understand that. I do understand that there are probably a lot of false reportings. But you cannot ascertain or understand or comprehend a situation that is happening in 84 seconds. You just can't. Not unless somebody is literally being murdered and screaming on the phone, then fair enough, it only takes you a couple of seconds. But if somebody's phoning up saying, I'm scared because I think this is going to happen, you're not going to be able to get all of the information. And though I do know that police do have their time wasted quite a bit, they should still listen just in case. They just should. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's carry on. And let's carry on reading, shall we? So, former constable, yes, I like that word, constable, Trevor Godfrey was allowed to retire from Sussex Police and kept his pension despite being due to face a misconduct hearing, accused of finding Shana Grease to be dishonest and failing to treat her as a victim. In this case, she was and was killed by the person that she kept on saying is stalking her and is threatening to kill her. But hey, let's let the actual police officer that decided that him not doing his job and at least listening to ascertain whether or not this incident was true or false, let's let him retire with full pension, full benefits, even though that if he would have stayed on the force because he retired early, he would have been going through a misconduct hearing and probably would have lost all of those benefits and that pension probably would have gone to prison for misconduct or some sort of form of recompense because of it. But hey, let's just let him retire. Let's let nothing happen to him who decided that somebody who generally wanted to use the police to phone up and to actually say that they were probably going to be murdered by somebody they knew because they were being stalked by somebody who wasn't even together with them anymore and only took 84 seconds to say, look, you're wasting police time. Let's give them full benefits. Let's give them a full pardon and not investigate whether or not he did commit misconduct. Because even though I can sit here, you can sit there, stand there, look on and say, yeah, he was definitely in a form of misconduct. He will no longer be remembered as somebody and this will no longer be put down to police misconduct. This will be a form of, not a statistic, just a death that a police officer wouldn't be able to solve. But hey, statistics, eh? They can't be manipulated in any way, shape or form. So, Miss Grease19 reported her ex-partner Michael Lane to Sussex Police five times in six months, almost once a month but was ignored and handed a £90 fine. A few months later, Lane attacked his former girlfriend and slit her throat 
with a knife before setting fire to her bedroom to try and burn her body in Portslead, near Brighton, East Sussex, in 2016. If a person is going to carry on phoning you once a month After being told the first time you're wasting police time or the second or third time saying that if you keep on phoning, we're going to fine you and they keep on phoning, they may have a legitimate reason why they're doing it. If somebody is fined, they still phone you, they probably have a legitimate reason to phone you. But hey, I'm not a police officer, am I? I wouldn't be able to say that that takes a warrant of investigation that that's not normal behaviour of a prankster. But hey, again, what do I know? I'm some bloke on the internet. I don't have a clue, right? So, today in Lewis, East Sussex Police PC Godfrey, who left the force on December uh, 31st, 2017, almost a year, appeared before a disciplinary hearing in uh, to answer charges of gross misconduct for failing to adequately investigate allegations of harassment and stalking. So, let's just read that one last time. PC Godfrey, who left the force on December 31st, 2017, who would have appeared before a disciplinary hearing to answer charges of gross misconduct, for failing to adequately investigate allegations of harassment and stalking. They were told how after the second time Miss Grace called the police in March 24th, 2016, Godfrey interviewed Lane and learned they had a sexual relationship. Even though (laughs) that doesn't mean that that person isn't one forcibly trying to get sexual relationships and there's only a story from one side, two, two, that the fact is that a person can still be controlling and be in a domestic abuse situation, even though that they're offering sex to their partnership. It's like you've already made an assumption and decided not to investigate. Miss Grace had called the police on this occasion as Lane had approached her in the street, pulled her hair and tried to grab her phone, the panel was told. So, not really normal behaviour from a person having sexual relations, is it? But, you know, I could be wrong. I'm a little bit older than what most people are. But I don't think kids are going around and just literally pulling girls' hair and trying to nick their phones on the street randomly. But, you know, I could be wrong. I could be a little bit too old now. Just to let you know, that is the girl who unfortunately had her throat slit due to incompetence of the police and not investigating properly on this occasion. So, in an interview, Lane told Godfrey he was in a sexual relationship with Miss Grace, which was March 23rd or 24th, 2016. And it was nothing more than a domestic argument. Oh, well, okay. So you can go around and pull somebody's hair and nick their phone and that's considered a domestic argument, is it? I call that domestic abuse, but you know, fuck me. I'm just some guy on the internet. But James Berry for Sussex Police said that the teenager was a vulnerable victim and apparently but because she failed to tell PC Godfrey she had been in a sexual relationship with Lane, the officer treated her as a dishonest complainant. Wow. Just just wow. Just wow. Because you didn't tell me that you were having sex with somebody, I'm going to completely and utterly disregard everything that you have said regarding the fact that you are basically at that point at least being domestically abused by a sexual partner. But because you didn't want to tell me that you were in a sexual relationship at some point, I'm not going to investigate. The level of policing in our country, ladies and gentlemen. In our country, that level right there. Fuck me. In a phone conversation lasting 84 seconds, he warned her about wasting police time perverting the course of justice. 
Mr. Berry said there was no appreciation that a young woman in a sexual relationship with a man can be vulnerable. But yet, that appreciation will never now be fully understood because the PC that didn't understand it has left the force on full benefits. With no re recompense or reconsideration or anything to happen to this person that was, you could say, I'm not officially saying, but you could say, aided and betted the person who was killing her. Because she didn't say she was in a sexual relationship with the person stalking her. Or at least was. He added that PC Godfrey, who previously received an outstanding investigator, the standard of policing, somebody who wouldn't investigate domestic abuse, gets an astounding investigation commendation before investigating that level. Makes you wonder about that level of um, the commendation, doesn't it? What they have to do to get to that level. In recognition of his good work after Sussex Police smashed a heroin trafficking gain. Also found to treat Miss Grace as a victim. Did not conduct a risk assessment and did not give her safety advice. But just said, you're wasting police time and here's a £90 fine. What? You still are phoning me to say that he's going to kill me? Oh no! I'm going to not investigate. Investigation award. There you go. Ah, Mr. Goffrey said Miss Grace lied to police and claimed the final decision to issue her with a fixed penalty notice was made by an inspector. Yeah, at your request. If the inspectors only have an overview of what you said and you only have 84 seconds to be able to determine if that person was lying or not, then the inspector is going to defer to your judgment. And to say that, oh, well, she didn't tell me that we were in a sexual relationship is then enough to say that, oh, well, she lied, so that's not going to be true. To lie about one aspect doesn't mean that you're lying about all aspects. It just means that you admitted to tell them that they were in a relationship. Doesn't actually say that, does it? He said, to pursue this through the courts, we would need a credible witness. We had a very minor assault between the couple who were having a relationship. Her evidence was to show, sorry, her evidence was shown to be untruthful and she was proven to be telling lies. If the evidence that a victim in any case is lying, we would not have continued. The only evidence that is portrayed in this story, and I'm not saying that I am adverse to the whole of this story or this case, but the evidence has been put through on this newspaper, the evidence in here. The only evidence to say that she lied was to say that she didn't admit to having a relation with this man. I, I just... The level of policing, ladies and gentlemen, the level of policing... A victim that won't admit that she's being victimised is now apparently, what, not allowed to... She has to admit everything for the police to investigate, not just actually investigate what she's said. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too optimistic about the police should actually investigate, you know, crimes. Or maybe it's a case of what happened afterwards and knowing that if they actually did their fucking job, she'd still be alive. Maybe that's what's got me at this point in time. If you wanted to know what he looked like, that's that's what he looked like. Him. There. He's a good lad, isn't he? Good lad. <sighs> so, the panel heard he also failed to comply with Sussex Police policing regarding domestic abuse, which resulted in Miss Grease not being treated as a victim. Wow, the police officer is trying to blame the victim was actually in breach of domestic abuse policies set out by the police. And that police officer that broke protocol when it comes to domestic abuse for victims has now got full benefits 
and is now never going to be charged for misconduct because he left the force before this conduct could be assessed by people on an active serving police officer. Just let that sink in. Just, just, just sniff it. Just sniff that level of fucking retardation. Lane continued to harass Miss Grace throughout June and July, remembering the phone call where she got fined was at March 23rd, 24th, 2016. So a month to two months after, and she continued to report him to police. On July 9th, Lane was cautioned by police and warned to stay away from Miss Grace after stealing her back door key and letting himself in creeping into her bedroom and watching her sleep. <sighs> just just let that sink in. He stole the back door key. So theft, technically robbery. Letting himself in, breaking and entering, technically trespassing at least. Creeping into her bedroom and watching her sleep. The textbook definition of stalking and obsessive compulsive behaviour as well, but besides the point. But however, after this, subsequent complaints or subsequent complaints by police, sorry, went unpunished. And on August 25th, Miss Grace was found murdered at her bungalow home. So the police knew that this person nicked a back door key, basically a way to gain entrance into the property, knew that this person would gain entrance into the property if he so could, and would stand or sit and watch her sleep, but didn't think of actually doing anything to this gentleman by making some criminal proceedings or an injunction or anything. And even though other complaints then further went unpunished after letting himself in and watching her sleep, didn't do anything. And then a month after July 9th, after this incident happened with other events happening, she was found dead with her body, her throat slit. Her body was discovered lying face down on the bed her throat had been slit. Lane had attempted to torch her bedroom to hide the evidence, but the blades had gone out. Despite the independent police conduct, launching a wide-scale investigation into police failings, only two police officers have faced accusations of gross misconduct. In May, PC Barry Mills was found guilty of gross misconduct and would have been booted out of the force if he had not already left. Which will not go on his record, by the way, because he already left. He also preserved his generous police pension. Shana Grace, a family, said earlier this year that charges made by Sussex police are too little too late. And I have to say I completely and utterly agree with everything that's being said here. And I do think that the police do good work overall. This is not a police bashing system or set. This is the fact that two police officers are at the very least and especially especially Goodwood or whatever his name is. I can't remember his name at this moment in time. But especially him was able to have these interactions. But because she didn't divulge that she was having a relationship, or at least had a relationship, because I can't imagine that she was having a relationship in the last three months at least. I can't imagine that happening. But, you know, I could be wrong. Stranger things happen at sea. But I can't imagine it. But even if she was, was the relationship actually due to abuse and the fact of being scared that she would actually lose her life from it, or was it a case of consent? If that was even the case that she was having a relationship. But, you know, that takes a level of... Um, investigation. Investigation, that's the word I'm looking for. Into a situation that a person that has been fined in March... 
of £90 for wasting police time and perverting the course of justice apparently kept on phoning up after that £90 award that's been given to her to say that this is still happening and yet somehow police still didn't want to investigate or even charge this person because of the previous admission of not having sex with him before and yet even after getting to the point of actually saying and finding out that Lan himself that prick there actually stole a piece of property to be able to gain entrance into a locked abode that he probably wasn't welcome in hence why stealing the key in the first place but you know investigation policing didn't seem to happen and then creeping into her bedroom watching her sleep a month before that she was killed and yet after that month after that fucking happened other complaints made by her were still not followed up and him not arrested, at least on suspicion of trying to do something, or stalking, or any sort of thing, or breaking and entering, or even fucking trespassing. None of that. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Not treating her as a victim of a form of domestic abuse. Not treating her as a form as a stalker. Nothing like that. Or being stalked, sorry, correct English. But yet, somehow... These people have got full pensions, full police regards, and will not have it put on their record that they fucked up. It's just in a public inquiry. But hey, what the hell do I know? Again, I am just some bloke on the internet, and I myself have no idea how to cover or to implement investigation or even how to comprehend how somebody so inept, so inept in the idea of investigating domestic abuse or stalking would completely and utterly negate the fact of investigating what the person is actually saying and only taking 84 seconds on a Pacific phone call to decide that she was wasting police time again. But again... I suppose I have to bow down to people's better logic and better understanding of investigation. After all, guys, he won an award for his investigative prowess. He won an award, don't you know? I'm a little bit too annoyed, a little bit too pissed off at this point in time to continue the video. So I'm going to bid you farewell. I'm going to bid you adieu. And for anybody that was affected by this video... Sorry, but these videos have to be produced and have to be put out there. There has to be public scrutiny of public services. And that's what has to be done. So please like, share and subscribe to this video and to this channel. And just produce the story. Even if you don't want to share the video, share the story. The links down below will be there. Please share the story. Because it's something that does actually have to be nationwide and known. That on this occasion... The police decided that because somebody didn't say that they were having a sexual relation or had a sexual relation with a person, that the domestic abuse that obviously was going on and at least some form of, should we say, not normal behaviour was contributing to a least a toxic relationship and had the potential to, I don't know, have a problem wasn't investigated at all and was completely and utterly sidestepped but with that ladies and gentlemen thank you very much again sorry about the ranty raviness of the actual video but it's something that really annoys me the police are supposed to be there to be able to protect and serve and yet they didn't protect and they didn't serve they didn't even take the time to investigate the allegations properly even even if she was lying all the way up to July, as soon as that guy stole the key to get into the property to literally stand, sit and watch her sleep, the police should have been made aware and known 
that this is a stream of events that has happened from beforehand that she has been linking to. And yet, even after that, more results and more complaints occurred about him and the police did nothing. These things need to be put out and produced and those police forces and police officers need to have justice come their way. Nobody should be above the law. No one. And this just proves that they are and they're a law above to themselves. And now I am going. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Bye-bye for now. Take care. And honestly, do take care. Bye-bye now. Thank you.